Dana, you and I shot together like forever ago. Do you remember that? I remember it was 2005. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And it was at my mom's studio. Yep. And it was with two guys. I can't remember their there name. There were two different shoots. One was with Marco Banderas. Okay. Um, and then the other one was with Tyler Knight. Yes, that's who it was. And a guy called Max. I yes. Think. God, yeah. you've got a great memory. I remember the weirdest thing. Yeah. I, you know, I used to always remember like uh, – I'm like an idiot about most things. Like literally I won't remember what we talked about five minutes ago. But I, I've, I'm i almost like kind of like Rain Man when it comes to my shoots. Like I will remember every shoot, who I shot, what they wore, where we were. But I've actually started to lose that. I've noticed over like the last couple of years I'm starting to forget shoots that I did and I'm kind of sad about it, though, to be fair, I've been in this industry for 20 years, yeah. and I've done thousands of yeah. shoots, like thousands. And so I don't know why I expect myself to be able to remember all that, but I feel like that's the one like piece of like intelligence that I can grasp onto because <laughs> all my other like smarts have gone out my brain because it's just been filled with porn. So, um, but uh, we were in, we shot in an alley. And we shot with a car, didn't we? Yeah, it was. I was like a limo driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it. That's what it yeah. was. I like that. That yeah. was. That was actually a really cool idea. I wanted to do another shoot like that, like as a female limo driver. Nobody else would be listening to this and take my fucking idea. God damn it! <laughs> you put her rip and shoot it. I know, right? Because <laughs> everybody listens to this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, what are you? What are you up to lately? Like, so you started off as a performer, yeah. and you've been doing like a ton of directing now. And that is that like pretty much mostly what you're doing these days? Yeah, mostly. Um, I started directing in 2006 mm-hmm. with New Sensations, mm-hmm. and then from there. We shot for some other places, some companies that are now defunct. Mm. Um, There's a lot of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then Bang Bros for a short period of time, a little bit. And then um, and then I came back in earnest in like 2011 and started with um, Mile High for mm-hmm. Sweetheart. Okay. And then I had my own stuff over at Evil Angel mm-hmm. and then – It was like lesbian anal fisting POV. Lesbian anal POV. Yeah, there was right? some of that. Yeah. Okay. And um, and then uh, and then Mile High was Sweetheart for many years, Sweetheart and Transsensual, so some TS stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then I stopped uh, shooting with Mile High – in September. Okay. So I started shooting um, content to for a site that I started with a partner, my partner, Sal Genoa. So he he um, shoots it in Destills. Mm-hmm. It's called Terra Triple X and it's um it's essentially it's uh hor- it's horror uh, porn. Okay. So I so that that's super interesting to me. I've never had anybody on before who's like been into horror porn or shot horror porn. So um, can you explain – for those people who haven't ever seen horror porn, can you kind of explain what it what it is? Sure. Um, to be fair – so when I started at Evil, I, I the first movie I did was a horror movie okay, called Forsaken. It was called Forsaken about a, a girl who um, who dies and doesn't realize she's dead. And, oh, and wow. So what, what happens? It stars Ash Hollywood. Um, so the, I'd always had an interest in horror. Mm-hmm. I mean from the time I was little. But it's a thing where – you're always concerned about marketability, of course, and what we do, yeah. and, and how you know we're always trying to make sure that what we're doing is is you know is going to make us money, is going to generate money, <laughs> or else we can't we can't keep doing it, right? Um, so fast forward a few years, um, and last spring I, there I saw a site called Horror Porn. I think they, it's out of based out of Czech Republic. Yeah, I've seen it. And so I was at, I, I thought, holy shit, there's a market for it. It seems successful. So then I thought I'd, I'd like to sort of put my, you know, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to take this in, in a direction that interests me. Right. So um, I called a uh, web guy and so we started shooting content for it. So th- the name of the site will be Terra Triple X. We're supposed to launch at some point. We're supposed to launch last, last month. Hopefully it'll happen before Christmas. Yeah, um, it's- those launch dates are never solid. It's tough. I don't know anyone who's been like who's had a website and like we're gonna they get who's ever stuck to the initial launch dates literally never happened. Right, and but I feel compelled to talk about it because it's I need to promote it for when it of when course. it does get out. But but yeah, so um, 
um, I'm there. There's a lot of correlations um, between like like fear and arousal. Yeah. And if you think about it, those are kind of like two of like our most basic drives. Yes. Fear and sex. Yep. Those are the two things that like people cling on to. I mean, look look at the media. All it's ever selling is fear or sex. Yeah. Fear of getting old or um, you've got to take these creams so right. that you don't look so old so right. then people won't have sex with you. Right. It's like, you know, there's all, it's so like incredibly intertwined. It is. I mean, it, I guess it, they're, they're the two things that drive us. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and growing up, you know, there was so much, I, I was just compelled uh, to watch these, these movies. I've seen so many horror movies. It's nuts. Um, and the, the kind of feelings that would surface, you know, be feeling excited and, and also being turned on by certain elements like vampires and, you know, succubi and uh, to a certain degree, like minotaurs and, and these, these, these kind of things. And, and I think about all like the rough sex that I did mm-hmm. in porn and the rough sex that I've shot. And um, I interviewed the, we last shot Maya Kendrick mm-hmm. and I asked her, you know, do you like to be scared? And she talked about enjoying that feeling of fear mm-hmm. and with all the kind of BDSM that she's done mm-hmm. and the unexpected in mm-hmm. anticipation and so these are the types of feelings that that I, I find really interesting. Um, so it's been fun and it's risky. You know, we don't have a lot of money. So we'll take, you know, we'll take a big risk. Like, oh, okay, this is what we're going to shoot. And I'm like, this is a great idea. And we get there. I'm like, holy shit, this could, this could get really, this could be really bad if it's not done right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's been a, it's been fun. Um, Do you have an um, example of like that specific situation where you're like, this could be bad if it's not done right. We shot a minotaur scene. I saw a picture of that on yeah. your Twitter. Yeah. I, I like the way that you created it as like a silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, because it's hard unless you have like a ton of money for special effects makeup right. and like costuming. Yeah, that can be. It could be really bad. <laughs> yeah, it could be well, really bad. It, well, I think about that too. Um, I forgot if it was. I think it was either H.P. Lovecraft or Alistair Crowley. Some someone said uh, that you know, there's essentially there's nothing more terrifying than what's in your own mind. Mm. And so, like, I remember seeing the movie. Um, it's the M. Night Shyamalan movie Signs, mm-hmm. which was really it was. I was watching. I was getting into it, mm-hmm. and then the problem was the big reveal. Yeah, I was like, ah, that, that's the alien. Yeah, that's. Um, I liked seeing the shadows and the little feet yeah. and like this these kinds of things that. You know, yeah, it's interesting actually. If you, I'm sure you probably know the story about the movie Jaws, yeah, and how like the mechanical shark like didn't work, and so <laughs> like for most of the film, and so for most of the film, um, you couldn't see, you never, you didn't see the shark right. because like they literally couldn't get it to work. Right. And Steven Spielberg, the thing was like his first big film. Right. He was like, "This is going to be a disaster. This <laughs> right. is the end of my career. The mechanical shark's not working." And it turns out that because you couldn't see it. For most of the movie, that's kind of what made it so compelling. Yes, yeah. exactly what you're saying. Like, what's in your mind is um, usually more terrifying than yeah. the reality. And then, of course, you know, us now with our our special effects and everything. Now, looking at that mechanical shark, we're like, oh my god, that looks so fake. Right, right. So the scary part was when you didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. I remember the girl. She's in the at the beginning of the movie, and she's in the ocean, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden she's like being pulled under, yeah. and she's freaking, and then she's moving. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. Yeah, because we that are, worked. we are, and as also as human beings, we are so afraid of what we can't see. Yeah. And yeah. that's why the ocean is so terrifying. Yeah. And the dark. Yeah. And all those things. It's true. Yeah. So go on. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, um, we're hopefully going to launch before the new year. <laughs> I said before Christmas, I'm saying before the new year. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it'll, I mean, when it'll come out, it'll be worth it. it, There's always like so much work that goes into that. Um, It's, uh, so it's interesting that, what, what, can you tell us a little bit more about like the types of scenes or who you've shot for the movie or anything specific? Sure. Um, So we've shot uh, Lily Love, Mm -hmm. Maya Kendrick, um, Lily, uh, I almost said Lily LeBeau, Ivy LaBelle, Mm -hmm. um, and, um, Damon Dice has been in it. Um, I've been in a few of the scenes. Um, we've shot Sovereign Sire for one of the scenes. Um, what else? I might be forgetting people. But th- th- those are the the first cluster of scenes that we have. 
Do you find that there are certain boundaries that you have to be careful not to cross? Like I know some yeah. companies, like the ones that I work for, like you can't have blood and sex in the same scene. Exactly. Yeah. That's um, – and, and fortunately for me at Evil Angel, um, I, I was um, – because I would send these emails and it would be something like, you know, to John Staliano and the subject would be like P. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, guys, I'm shooting a scene and, you know, it, uh, where I'm going to – Pee and Adriana Chechik's asshole. Um, how do we shoot this? And then there'd be like this very like concise like instructions on how to do it. Like no judgment at all. She's like, okay, so this is how you need to do it. Yeah. Or I'm I'm shooting. I'm I'm depicting autoerotic asphyxiation. How do I do it? And then they'd send back like this mm-hmm. is how you do it. And yes, it's the same thing. I have had to reshoot two scenes. Really. Um. And I thought I was abiding by the rules, but I mean it's it's very strict. Yeah. I get it. So um there is blood in um in a few of these, but there's there's a thing where I had to make sure. I was like, as I recall, yeah, exactly. The sex ends separate scene, there can be blood. It, it right. can't be related. Right. But it can it can be rela- we we understand it's related to the sex that happened, but we can't yeah. show it. You can't yeah. suggest that there's like cutting that kind of violence yes. going on during the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um do you find that uh, – so you've shot a lot of, like, rough porn. Yeah. And um, do you find that as a woman that's kind of easier to shoot? Do you feel like you have a little bit more safety, a little bit more leeway than guys? Because I know that especially lately, you know, there's been a lot of situations yeah. where girls were doing rough scenes and they felt uncomfortable and they felt that they couldn't say no. They couldn't, you know, talk about how they were being pushed too far because there was no other women on set. Do you find that as a woman that's kind of an easier thing for you to manage? Yeah, I, um, I'm trying to think. Yes. I mean, I try – well, there's a lot because I get – I'm generally um, – nervous before those kinds of scenes just because I've, I've also having been a performer mm. it's casting is so important it's mm-hmm. just, I need to make sure I would never um especially because of my own experience back in those rough the, the rough like oh three oh four oh five years yeah where, when we were going crazy when it was just like the porn olympics like how many like bats can you stick up someone's butthole exactly. and like just like going yeah. out of control yeah yeah um but I would show up and it would be a guy that I didn't know and mm-hmm. then we're you know you're just sort of like taking everybody's word for it that they understand what's okay and what's not and yeah. then you and you go um so now with that in mind I, it, casting is very important making sure that people are comfortable I won't shoot a rough scene unless the girl wants to work with this particular guy right um so um, I think it's – it probably is easier also just because I would never ask anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Right. Um, although there have been scenes where um, – um, I think with Justine Jolie, I think she went really far with Aiden Starr. But I knew Aiden – I would trust Aiden Starr with my life. Yeah. I mean as far as like if I had to do something that I was terrified of, she's the person that I would trust to right. keep me alive and pay <laughs> right. attention to, you know, p- yeah. read my cues and all that. Right. Um, so I have shot some stuff where I'm kind of fascinated. I'm like, oh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do waterboarding. I couldn't yeah. do it. Um, but I'm fascinated that Justine is, she wants to do this and she's, uh, she feels, um, she's a, like a power bottom or she was anyway. Mm-hmm. She really enjoys, um, subbing. And so, um, I've shot scenes like that where I'm sort of fascinated, but you know, everything's in place and we've all checked in with each other. Small sets, I think are, um, um, better for for rough sex scenes too, because people don't feel like there's a huge audience. Yeah, where they feel yeah afraid to say no because they don't want to disappoint anyone or yeah. ruin the shoot. I think right. I've been that performer where I'm like I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut and just get through this because people are here need to make money and right. stuff. I've I've done that. Um, so um, yeah, I mean I suppose because I'm a woman that's been on that side of it, uh, on that other side of things. And um, I think being a mom also Mm -hmm. (laughs) means being, um, you know, uh, wanting to take care of people. Right, right, right. So. Right. Um, So do you feel like you, because for me, I feel that I don't really shoot rough scenes, um, but if I'm in a situation where maybe I'm shooting with a new girl who's not sure about doing boy girl or, you know, they're uncomfortable just because it's like their first time or they're new, I I feel maybe I'm wrong, that I can read the cues a little better being a woman. And I feel, I hope that they feel that they can tell me 
how they feel because I'm a woman, you yeah. know, that like there's that comfort level as opposed yeah. to like sometimes I, see, I can see how it's intimidating, like telling a guy. Oh, you for know. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think that that's definitely, I mean, I think that's, that's helpful for us as directors. Um, I, th- I think we are, yeah, I think we can read cues a little better. Yeah. Um, and I do think that the, that the girls, the newer, younger girls feel safer. Right. Um, and, um, um, which is not to say, I mean, sometimes I worry that I'm misinterpreting, you know, enjoyment that, that, that I think that things are okay. And then it turns out that they're not like, I, yeah. I, th- I know that's a thing too. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we do the best we can. I mean, at, at the end of the day, as long as we're articulating, like you can tell me anything, please let me know. I actually had that with a girl, mm. um, that, uh, we were getting ready to shoot a scene and, um, the makeup artist actually took me aside and said, Hey, just so you know, she's really freaked out because this is a, a BDSM themed movie and she's never done any BDSM and she's scared and she saw right. the floggers and the this, which were really just props. I mean, this yeah. was as- floggers are like I've I've been I've done some BDSM and for yeah. me, floggers are the best because they actually, especially if you get the soft leather yeah. like strips, it actually doesn't hurt at all. It's no. quite soft and, and yeah. it feels fine. Yeah. Like a riding crop is much more sure. painful. Yes. Yeah. Um but I think she was just scared of the idea. And right. I wouldn't have known. The makeup artist took me aside. Um, and then I took her aside and and said, hey, I understand that you're nervous about this. Listen, you do not have to do anything that you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Like we can – that all of that is just visual. I can't really legitimately shoot any BDSM for this for this company. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's more the idea of it. Mm-hmm. And this was, a, again, a casting issue. I didn't cast this movie. There was a mm-hmm. period of time where I wasn't doing any of the casting, and so I would end up with people that were That's not, you know, dry, it's drove me nuts. frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like I've had that situation too where, you know, some corporate entity wants to do all the casting having no idea who um, can do a good scene, who's a good actor. Like they give me horrible actors for big feature movies, and right. it just – it's like a joke. It's like this is a gonzo girl. This is not a feature actor. Like there's right. there are two different types of things. And and I think like, you know, not being on set, they don't understand that. And I think I really do believe that it's so important to at least give the director some say in the casting. For sure. I've had that. I'm like, okay, this this girl um is no longer with us. Mm-hmm. This one retired. Mm-hmm. Like years ago, yeah. like oh yeah, you know, yeah. I, I can't bring Belladonna back. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I know we we would all love to see her again. I can't. <laughs> right. I don't know. What, you know, it's it, it'd be really out of touch. Yeah. Really out of touch. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So so in those situations, I but I, I told this girl. I said we well, can also. You don't have to be here, and it, this doesn't mean you'll never shoot for us again. Like this was not. This is not your fault. She ended up staying, and she did a great scene, and mm-hmm. I ended up. Um, take doing the BDSM portion for her. I'm like, I'll I'll take it. I'll, I wrote myself in. I'm over here, flog, 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 and then she does the sex. Um, That's kind of good that you can write yourself in like that. That's yeah. helpful. <laughs> like, get me in makeup. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take the cane for her. Yeah. So it worked out, but it's that thing too of um, I wouldn't have known except that the makeup artist told me like, hey, she's terrified. Yeah, I find that often the makeup artist is the most cued into yeah. the model because obviously they're spending like an hour to two yeah. hours right in front of them. Right. And so um, it's really helpful for me, like casting is incredibly important, but also like my crew is so yes. important to me. And yes. I think um, I see a lot of directors go through crews really quickly, yeah. you know, but for me, it's all about like I've worked with a lot of the same people for over 10 years. Yeah. And um, the makeup artist is so important. Not only, you know, they not only have to be good at what they do, but they have to be good with the girls. Yeah. They have to, like, a lot of times, you know, they'll, like, help me, like, talk the girls up, make them feel sexy and beautiful. Oh, you're going to have a great time. This is going to be awesome. Like, build their confidence up or be there to let me know if there's something about the girl that I should know, like, I don't know, maybe she's falling asleep in the makeup chair yeah. because she did too many drugs last night. Yep. Or um, she's scared to do the scene. Or, I mean, I had a situation where um, a couple months ago, I had a girl come in and she was like in a really bad mood. And, um, you know, it turns out that, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure her boyfriend was hitting her. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and that was like a horrible thing to find out. But it was, it was good for me to know because, I mean, I didn't, 
talk to her about it because that's not my place. Right. But um, you know, I was I was able to manage her much more gently and know that like she wasn't just being a bitch because you know, she was being a bitch. Like she had right. a bad attitude. It was like there was something serious going on. So just stuff like that is like so important to know before you go into yeah. to shooting. And so like the makeup artist is so valuable in that way. Um, so when you – have you ever had a situation where you've like either not shot the scene or completely changed it because you had to because of the girl? Yep. And how was – how was that – how did you manage that? Um – I had one situation where I was informed that this girl was, you know, um, uh, on drugs mm. and kind of freaking out. Yeah. Um, and we just, we called the scene mm-hmm. and I, I just, you know, t- told her I wanted to make sure she was okay. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I, you know, um, called her agent and said, I'm concerned, you know, like this is, she needs help. Yeah. And, and uh, it's... So I've I've done that. I've um It's good that you can handle that in a gentle way as opposed to being like, Oh my god, this bitch is on drugs and like just being kind of furious and yeah. kicking her out and Yeah. That's always the worst. I like that actually happens a lot less frequently than I think people think it does in the porn industry. Yeah. I know that like a lot of people think everyone in the industry is on drugs, but I don't know. I found that especially um and I know you've been in the industry a long time as well, especially like lately I feel like that's changed. I feel like you're getting a lot less of that. You're getting a lot more girls who are really serious about their career yeah. and who like are ambitious and are, you know, have a focus and aren't just coming in to like make some extra money on the side all like blinged out of their fucking head. It it, it definitely I think I think it um I also because there's it's a lot harder now, I think, to um, have a career here mm-hmm. unless you are ambitious, unless you are um, – you know how to diversify. I mean we, we are more of an industry of several, like a lot of just these these kind of entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, in the old days, I'm sure you remember, yeah. it would be like, oh, contract star, couldn't get out of bed, so everyone has to go home now. Hopefully tomorrow she'll show up. Oh, contract <laughs> yeah. star fell asleep in the bathtub. Yeah. Oh, we fired her. Oh, now she's a contract star somewhere else. Like, yeah. Now it's like people talk, and it's yeah. like – well, social media has been a big huge. part of Huge. It's like this person, uh, no show, doesn't care. She was partying, saw it on her Twitter the night mm-hmm. before she was out partying. Yeah. And we are working with, with, with less money. Mm-hmm. So no one wants to take that risk anymore. And yeah. I think that people are clued into that. Yeah. yeah. And and the thing is, is that for, you know, every girl who is going to be a no-show because they were getting wasted the night before, there's 20 girls who are desperate to work, yeah. who will show up on time, will show up with having read their lines yeah. with the wardrobe you asked for. Like there's a lot of people who are very serious about their yeah. job now. Yeah. And um yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way. Like if I even if I you know, and being on social media and talking to other directors, if I even hear that a girl's unreliable or difficult or late, like I won't even book her. Yeah. And there I actually had a situation, but that's not to say that like people can't change. Sure. Because I did have a situation where a girl reached out to me a couple of weeks ago. She emailed me and I hadn't been hiring her for a while because I heard she was unreliable. I heard she was unstable and all this stuff that I just don't want to deal with. And she emailed me and she said, you know, I'd really love to work for you again. Um, You know, I had a drug problem for a while. I had, you know, some issues and I know I've been unreliable and all of this, but I've gotten clean. I'm seeing therapist. I've got my act together, you know, and I'd really love to like have you give me a second chance? And I was like, absolutely. Because, you know, for me, like I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I totally understand being a mess. (laughs) And I so appreciated that um, she reached out to me and that she, you know, was honest with me. And I mean, I will always give people a second chance as long as they're honest with me. Yeah. Because, you know, we're not perfect. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. And it's hard too when there's people that I absolutely love and I just see them falling off. And I'm like, I... Please, I just don't want that, and yeah. I and I I can't shoot them, and I want to because mm-hmm. they're talented and they're, yes. they're good, and they're they're good people. They're just they're 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 struggling, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, for sure, it's 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 a tough thing when you see an up and coming person who has a ton of potential, and then they're just you can you see it as it happens. You're like, yeah. no, I know, I know, but everybody's got their own journey, yeah. 
you know, sometimes, I mean, honestly, I think that sometimes girls just come into this industry too young. Yes. And it, I don't know how you feel about this, but, the, you know, there's been some talk about, like, raising the minimum age to 21, which on one hand I can see. I think it's it's smarter to wait until you're absolutely sure this is what you want to do. But it's like if we can send people to war when they're 18 and that, but and they can't shoot porn, that's kind of like – a, a bizarre thing. And also too, somebody else brought up a good point. I can't remember who it was that, um, you know, some of these girls really need these jobs. And since you are, we are entrepreneurs now these days yeah. and girls can be independent to get out of like bad situations that they may be in, you know, like a, if they grew up in a bad family with no money, no opportunity, they can, porn can be that platform that they can actually become their own personal entrepreneurs and become independent. And it's like, you, you don't want to take that away from people. And I know some girl, some 19-year-old girls who are much more emotionally mature than some 30-year-old girls. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's that's a tricky thing. Um, um, you know, I it's – there was a time when I thought, okay, you know – you, you don't really know your body. You don't really know what you want, and mm-hmm. you've decided you want to do this porn thing, um, you know. And then, and then you, they have buyer's remorse, mm-hmm. like six, seven months in, a year in. They and now have, with the internet, you can't take, and you can't walk, you can't go away from it. You can't take it back. So you can't get that, you know, teaching job that you wanted with mm-hmm. kids, like all of these things. But now, it's a different time. It's a different time now. You know, I, I always say this to people when 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 they ask me, like, well. You know what? What about the repercussions and all that? And I'm like, we are living in a time where you know the former vice presidential candidate had a sex tape with his pregnant mistress while his wife was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. Like this, we we are in a time when when you everyone has a sex tape. Everybody yeah. has been involved in some way, uh, for better or worse. I think that um, we're a lot more jaded now. Yeah, it's a different time. I don't know that the repercussions are going to be as bad now as they would have been ten years ago. Even. Yeah, they, there has been studies that have shown that the younger generations are a lot less judgmental against porn and sure. people who've done porn than like the older generations. Yeah. Do you find that that stigma follows you around at all? Like, how is that for you in your personal life? Because I know you're a mom. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so um, <laughs> it's, this is kind of a funny story. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, I have three children with with Manuel Ferrara, mm-hmm. and um, we're divorced, but we're friends, and I. Super, super close with his 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 current wife, mm-hmm. Kaden, um, and stuff. But didn't you guys used to live next door to each we other? We still do. You still live yeah, next door to each other. That's really great that yeah. you can like raise your families together. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. And I and I love their their kid a lot. Um, so yeah, you know, it's 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 it works really well. But I can't. So our kids used to go to a French school. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our three boys did, and it's a thing where we just we sent sent our kids there and everything's fine. And, and then, uh, I find out, um, that, uh, the woman that the, our, our nanny at the time who's French, she, she came home one day and she goes, you know, that, um, everyone thinks that Manuel is like a retired soccer player. I said, <laughs> what? She said, yeah, they, they think he's like a retired soccer player. It's the weirdest thing. And she goes, I didn't say anything. Yeah. But like one of the teaching assistants was like, oh, you know, and their dad, because he's like a retired soccer player. Like, like she's like, oh. And so I told Manuel, he goes, get out of here. That really? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, that, no, that can't be. But he had had knee surgery. Mm-hmm. So he was kind of limping. And so he's, then he starts like going, like he picks up our, our, our son and, and one of the dads is like, hey, you know, I used to play soccer. Uh, and when I was in school, and Manuel's like, okay. He goes, <laughs> Does Manuel play soccer at all? He, I mean, f- he plays way more basketball than he, I mean, than soccer. He used to pl- not really. Like, I mean, he <laughs> he knows how to play it and he's into it. But And then we realized that probably he's recognizable, but, but these he, guys don't, they don't make the connection. And yeah. so they see him limping and then they're like, soccer. You know, yeah. Because they're all into the... You know, into and into. one one person probably said soccer, and then the rest of them were probably like, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay, soccer, yeah, that's where I know him from." Right. So it's really funny. And then word got out, and right? And it was you know, and so it the where it was, I never had any issues 
personally, but but our oldest son, when he was in first grade, the teacher who was like an older woman, just kind of would have this attitude that like, well, his parents do this. Mm-hmm. So like there was one time when he, I think he pinched a girl's butt mm-hmm. and like in this sort of playful way. Right. Um, and it became this thing of like, well, you know, his it's parents of, do this. Yeah. I'm like, no, or he's a six-year-old boy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, these other boys are pushing the girls over and yanking their hair or like kind of exposing themselves, you know, doing yeah. these kind of behaviors that you you see. Yeah. And in our oldest is he's kind of innocent in a way. And, and because we are so careful about talk of, of sex and we're more – probably more conscious of it than, than other parents because yeah, of what sense. we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, Reese, like lately I – I dread the play date mm-hmm. because that becomes the, so what do you do? Yeah. And I don't lie because I'm not ashamed of what I do. But right. I'm like, let's get this out of the way. Right, right, right. And now I get questions like, oh, do you know Rocco Sofredi? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, kind of. And they're like, there's this documentary. So now with 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 documentaries, like mm-hmm. people watch and they see Rocco and he's a dad. He does all these things. He's conflicted. He's interesting. He's, you know. Stuck. Right. And so it's it's helpful. I think now it's 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 a lot easier. Um, so if there's issues with what I do or or what Manuel does or what Caden does, it it, it hasn't come up now. Right. Um, it's also helpful, I think, being in LA and mm-hmm. being around so many people that are in different forms of entertainment. Yeah, because um, our kids go to school with 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 kids whose parents are actors or musicians. Mm-hmm. They tend they're they're very chill. Very yeah. chill. They'll drop their kids off at our house, you know. Yeah. Because that was my fear too. Is like, oh, what if there's porn? Every what if there's yeah. porn people? What if? The, no, it's it has it's been okay. Yeah. So thank God. Right, right, yeah. right. Do you think that it may it might become more of an issue when they get older and hit puberty? Yep. Yeah. Already, because our oldest, he's almost twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's that funny thing again where it's like he's got these friends, and I'm like, what is going on? He's like, oh. <laughs> So uh, this is a funny story. So our 12-year-old, he – so that you know the No Nut November? Yeah. So he – people had been talking about it, I guess, at school. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, I was talking to my friends and I said, well, No Nut November was easy for me because I don't eat nuts. Oh, my God. And then they said, well, that's not what that means. He's like, so what does it mean? I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like how your kid didn't know what it of meant. Course but all the, the other kids did. <laughs> that, and that's that's where we are. It's really funny. Oh, my God. That's um, hilarious. Yeah. So um, – um, but he knows what we do. Mm-hmm. And we had this system where every stage of development, we would give him a little bit more information that mm-hmm. was – that for what he could handle. Right. We believed he could handle. And then – Steve Holmes, interestingly enough, um, he's a friend of ours, and he was like, "You guys need to tell him like soon." And this is when before he, was, he finds it on the internet, exactly. Yeah. And he goes, "You, yeah, this is a race against time. You don't understand what you're up against." Because yeah. we had always believed that, oh, when he hits like 14, yeah, but kids are looking at porn yeah. earlier than that now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I sat him down and I had a conversation. I said, "So you know that we make controversial movies." That was the first thing is when we, I explained that our, mm. the movies we made are controversial and explained to him what controversial means and then um that it's it's related to sex that we've been in these movies um the important thing for me was that he would understand that everything that was happening in these scenes was was consensual because Mm -hmm. you know his dad and i are both known for doing like rougher scenes right um and he's uh he has taken it he's handled it very well but i did explain to him like there may come a point where your friends recognize your dad or recognize me more than likely recognize him because he's in everything. Yeah. Um, and that you are sort of prepared for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's he has a friend. He goes, my friend, um, his older brother looks at, at porn and he's also looked at porn. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just letting you know. He goes, but he says he's only interested in 2D girls because he likes – um, Japanese porn, like hentai. He was watching hentai. I'm like, okay. Okay, yeah. well, we're not in that. You don't have to worry <laughs> yeah. about that. I'm like, if, if, as long as he just keeps watching that, then yeah. he's not going to run across, you know, I, either of us. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so he's, he's, he, he understands, he knows. Um, and he doesn't really care that much. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, 
he doesn't really care that much. And I don't know how much of that is just that it's because we sort of did it in the right way, Mm -hmm. sort of preparing him. And also because it's the 2018. Like, I think that both things have worked kind of in our favor. I think a lot of it honestly does have to do with you being open and honest and not making it a big deal, not making it taboo. Because I know for me, like people, you know, the one question I always get is like, when did you find out what your parents did for a living? And I don't remember like, that finding out moment, that epiphany, because they were always like pretty honest with right. us. Um, and I, I remember, I think at the beginning, they just told us, you know, what mom and dad is do is we take pictures and make movies for grown ups, right? Just for grown ups, and you can't look at it because it's for grown ups and you're right. not old enough. And that was kind of like when I was young, and I didn't really understand what that meant. I didn't really care because right. you know, like I'm not interested. No, no kid cares what their parents do for right. a living when you're super young, right. you know. And then when I got older and hit puberty and I started stealing the magazines from the office, which was in the guest house behind the house. So then I became more interested. But still at the same time, it wasn't like, I don't know, it was never a big deal. It was never something that consumed my life. I mean, I remember the most difficult thing was having to try to hide it from my friends or my friend's parents or my teacher's. That could be kind of a pain in the ass. But, you know, the internet didn't exist at the time. So I didn't have to worry about people finding, you know, my mom online or something like that. So, you know, most of the time people had no idea who she was and I would just say she was a glamour photographer and they would just drop it at that. But I do really believe that honesty is a huge thing, you know, and I know a lot of parents that won't tell their kids what they do for a living. And I just feel like that's so much worse because then your kid's going to see you online. And they feel betrayed. They feel betrayed and they feel like they were lied to. And and like the worst thing you can do is betray your child's trust. Yeah. I'm very honest. Um, I mean, the little ones are still too young, yeah, but, but yeah. with my oldest, you know, and I, I, I'll talk to him about being conflicted about yeah. what I do and, and explaining, like, listen, yeah. um, with, with, you know, with, with having you and things like this, I don't want things to be hard for you and, and things to be hard, for, you know, have been challenging for me in some ways. Like I couldn't have anticipated, I mean, I could have anticipated and I did anticipate some, mm-hmm. you know, that there would be some, um, um, things would be challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't realize until you're in it. But it, yeah. but at the same time, it's it's also been fairly easy. I mean, he he understands that. He's he's kind of takes it in stride. Right. Um, but and, – and it might be a whole different ballgame if he does come across stuff or his friends yeah. do come across. I mean, I yeah. prepared him, but at the same time, you know, uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, – you know, so so far, so good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've seen like, I mean, my mom was never in porn or anything sure. like that, but she did Hustler and she did Playboy. Yeah. And I've seen all that stuff. And I don't know. I have like no problem separating like Susie Randall from my mom. Sure. You know, like I guess they're two different people or, or they're not. Right. I don't know. It just doesn't bug me at right. all. And I know, and I have two siblings, neither who are in the adult industry and it doesn't bug them either. And I think it's just because my parents never made it a big deal. Yeah. So it's not a big deal to yeah. us. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I mean, kids so much pick up on what their, their parents believe and, yeah. and how their parents react to things, you know, when they're young. So I think it's kind of like, however you manage it is how right. they will manage it. Right. So I think that that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing a little bit of research on you and, um, there is a couple things that you've uh, said that I just wanted to have you elaborate on. Sure. So um, you said once, you said, sometimes I think I'm too much of a rebel for corporate porn. So um, can you explain that a little bit more? Um, so porn has become... Me, I understand. Yeah. It's like shooting corporate porn. I just want you to know that. I get it. <laughs> I just feel like with corporate porn, you can get a little monkey to do it. You know, it's yeah. just they have these things and you just need to hit these points and yes. it needs to be lit this way and shot this way with these people and they need to say this and they need to wear that and you have to get these kind of these key shots mm-hmm. and it's all based on these sort of algorithms and these metrics and all that and I don't think you can apply that to to the essentially the id you know mm-hmm. to these things I don't know A long time ago, I used to work at Mitchell Brothers. I was a dancer. And there was a girl that got up on stage, and she was your typical beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy standing there, and I'm like, wow, you know, so-and-so, she's she's perfect. And he he goes, yeah, she doesn't make my dick hard. And Mm -hmm. I was like, why not? He goes, I don't know. I mean, yeah, she's 
has this face and she looks like she could be a model. And he goes, I don't know why she does. She just doesn't. Yeah. I don't know what makes my dick hard. I know it when I see it. Yeah. And so I've had things like, okay, well, you submitted this outline, but you have these two girls having sex outside. I'm like, yeah, because in the scene they're doing this. And they're like, yeah, but um, the numbers show that outdoor sex scenes don't do that well. So if you can just move that inside, I'm like, outdoor sex scenes don't do that well, or the outdoor sex scenes that haven't performed well, maybe had two people in it that didn't work. Yeah. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it was because no one likes actually strap on sex anymore and they were having, you, it's not that. Or, well, shower scenes have been doing, performing really well. I'm like, no, the shower scene with Angela White <laughs> yeah. um, and Marcus Dupree did well. And the one with, you know, it's, it's, they 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 act like this is it and these are the rules and this is how they're going to make all this money because of this and i just i got in a lot of trouble because i just you know i i can't work like that yeah. and uh no disrespect to people that can i mean yeah. they're they're doing awesome but i it's not how i work if right. i'm going to do something that involves sex and and intimacy I, it's got to feel uh it's got to feel natural in a way to what my instincts are and their instincts are. Right. Yeah, I remember I shot a movie once where the, the directions were specifically no sex on a bed or a couch. I was like, and all the scenes are like in a kitchen or like on Jesus. a patio or like <laughs> in the most like dining room, the most uncomfortable places that you could ever have. And I was like, what do you mean no sex on a bed or a couch? They're like, well, same thing like numbers show that like scenes do better when they're like not on a bed. And I was like, I get that you're probably trying to break out of that conformity of like all these porn scenes on like a boring bed and stuff like that. But I feel like when performers are in a comfortable environment, they're going to perform better. Right. You're going to get a better scene. Right. So I just thought that was really funny. Yeah. So I understand what, what you're saying. Yeah. What do you think is the most important element to a good sex scene? Um, as close to authentic as possible, mm-hmm. and I say as close to I in the old days, um, in the old days. Um, <laughs> hey, girl, I get it. <laughs> I I remember the old days. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, um. Ca- I mean, again, casting is everything. Mm-hmm. If, if you if you can control it. Um, and then within the story that you're doing, I mean, it's it's got to make sense for the fantasy, I suppose. Right. I mean, that's because I'm 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 still a consumer. I'm still watching stuff, mm-hmm. and, and the stuff that I like, the most important thing beyond, I don't need the people to be even attractive. Mm-hmm. I just need them to be into it. I just mm-hmm. want them to be wanting what's happening, and they want to feel good, and they want to make the other person feel good. And as much as you can convey that, that to me is that's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, of all, and then of course, if it's a if it's um if it's a fantasy scenario where it's like I don't know a teacher and a student and they're you know getting it on in the in the break room or whatever the the, the closet yeah um that they may they stay in character right. you know that there's still hesitation on the yes. part of the the teacher or yes. nervousness on the part of the girl and that it stays throughout the scene um. So it um, feels authentic. I exactly. like it when um, performers like kind of bring the story yes. into the sex. Yes. Like they refer back to whatever their character is yeah. or whatever the scenario is as opposed to like just getting into the sex and then it's just all – and then it's just sex. You know what I mean? Right. Like when you keep that storyline intertwined in the sex, I like that. Right, because it ruins it when the girl's playing a virgin and then suddenly she's in pile driver. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah, like – totally. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done this before. Ah, give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> um. How do you feel about this new, like, kind of pigeonholing of either you're a teen or you're a MILF? Yeah, that's really – I it, it's awful. <laughs> it's it's terrible. <laughs> so you're not, not a fan? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I, I mean, the older, like, um, I love that there are – that there's a place for older women in yeah. porn. Because there wasn't before. Oh, yeah, you were – Forget it. Yeah, yeah. you're done. Like 28, you're out of here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I I love that. Um, and I love, I mean, I love all the 
the uh, quote unquote MILFs that mm-hmm. we have. I love Brandy Love and India Summer and Sheree. And it's funny. I find that I almost prefer shooting MILFs because do, do you find that like yeah. they, just, they just have their shit together? Oh, yes. Like they yes. come with the wardrobe, they've read all the lines, yeah. they have corporations, so I don't need to work about workers' comp. Like so many things. And it's just like, God, you're so fucking organized. Like I love shooting MILFs. And they like the same music as me and they get yeah. the same jokes as I do. And yeah. I'm just like, we could relate so much easier. Yeah, no, and you, and they're hot, like because yeah. they they know what they like. Yeah, you know? and they're mat- and they've yeah. like come into their own, and they're yeah. confident, and they're yeah. confident in who they are. I mean, um, I'm sure you remember, you know, your 20s. Like for me, I just was so lost, you yeah. know, and just trying so hard to figure out who I was, and just being so self conscious about everything. And, and it's true, like once you hit your 30s, and and I just turned 40 this year, like. It's really amazing just how you develop as a woman yeah. and you're just like, okay, this is who I am and I'm and and you become okay with that. Yeah. As opposed to constantly wishing you were something else. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it it, it really comes across. Um but it it's hard because there are those performers that just first of all, there's somewhere I'm like, no, you're not a MILF. You know, and they're being shot for MILF stuff. And it's because they've got to fit. They've got to fit into one category or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, crazy. I mean, I, I'm sure you have too. I've I've cast girls who are like 25 as milfs. Yeah, I did a scene with two girls, like a teen and a milf, and they were literally a year apart. Yeah, and I was like, and it was just because <laughs> the older girl had just gotten lip injections, so she looked older. Right. Because <laughs> sometimes that shit just makes you to look older. Yeah. No, when they do all the work, and <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. Well, and now you just, now you just look older. Yeah. 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 You were fine before. Yeah. You know, hold off. You got yep. time. Yeah. But um. Yeah, it's that. That to me is a little ridiculous because I, I wish there was a, a place for just like career girls or something where they're like thirties. Yeah, because it's also there seems to be like no in between anymore. Yeah, yeah, and and there's that's an important area, and there's some that have managed to navigate. Because I don't think of Adriana Chechik as a teen. I don't mm-hmm. think of her as a milf. I think of yeah. her as that in between. Right, and she's managed to. Keep her career going. Yeah, um, but I wish there was m- more of a of that that area. In general, I don't like pigeonholing. You know, it's just. But the problem is that whole the that the older younger older younger older younger is just it plays into that whole algorithm thing that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, and then the need to like tag people in a certain category and have a searchable, um, a searchable search term. Yeah, you know, like milf or teen or you know, and everybody looks. Oh, okay, milf's a big search term. Well, you got to be a milf. Or no one's going to find you. No yeah. one's going to want to watch your scene or anything like that. Yeah. And there's a lot of women I know, too, who are, like, technically MILF age, which right. means, like, 28 or right. older, right. Um, who refuse to do MILF scenes because they're just like, I don't want it. Because once you get pigeonholed into that, like, MILF category, you're just like, that's there you are. Yeah, and it's hard because you can conceivably be a stepmom and be 25, you know. That is actually the case with a really good friend of mine. Um, she is no joke. Uh, I think she – well, she just turned 27, but when she married her husband, she was 26. And her stepdaughter was two years younger than her because yeah. he was older. And it was actually – it's hilarious. We would always just joke about like how you have sex with your stepdaughter. Yeah, like, right, it was no, just so funny. It's, it's basically – it it's, it's a porn setup. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was hilarious. Um. So uh, how do you feel about – how important do you think that financial independence is these days? Like since you've seen the change with the internet and how it's really enabled women to be more financially independent, um, how important would you say that is to new performers to like be your own entrepreneur, create your own content, that kind of stuff? It's so important. Um, it's funny because I – I'm just going to say it now because I'm no longer um, at mile high. But when uh, – <clears throat> I'd be on set and girls would say, can I turn on my OnlyFans yeah. to, you know, sort of show yeah. me like doing, getting my pictures done. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? Do it. Yeah. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to, no, you can't do that when you're on set, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, because you're only making $800 today and they're going to be making millions. So fucking do, do your OnlyFans. It's fine with me. I feel the same yeah. way. And I and so many companies are like now telling me, you know, make sure that they aren't doing this, they aren't doing that. And I'm just like, okay, like I get it if it's a secret project or something sure. like that. Yes. Or if it's something like, um, you know, for example, like I shoot the Twisties Treat of the Month every month. Like right. 
uh, that is a very specific look that they've, you know, catered and it's a very, sure. you know, and, and I get that. So yeah. like there's no BTS on those. Yeah. You can take BTS and you can post it later, but you can't release that that day. Yeah. And I totally understand that. Right. But like for some other shoots, I'm like, honestly, I really don't believe that you are, that these fans that are on this girl's Snapchat are now not going to join your right. website because they saw a couple of 10 second snaps of the scene. Right. And so they're they're not going to join. If anything, I think it's great promotion. Yeah. Now there's a difference between getting a couple snaps here and there and then like literally setting your phone down and hitting like live record and filming Uh, the whole scene. Exactly. That's another thing. That's a whole, yeah. Yeah. And there's another thing, and there's a thing about girls wasting time on set because they're constantly taking selfies. They're going in the bathroom, shooting like a fucking striptease while all of us are on set waiting for them to get there. Like that is also like disrespectful. Like, you know, you yeah. and I both know we usually pay per hour at a location. And plus, we don't want to fucking be there all day. Yeah. Neither does the crew. Right. So so that is annoying. But for me, like when I do my own productions, I actually um, have somebody else, uh, usually Bailey Rain, come on set and shoot like uh, behind the scenes, Snapchat, OnlyFans, whatever, for me and for the girl. Right. And I'll be like, give Bailey your phone. She'll shoot it for you too. Because uh, why shouldn't you also make yeah. some extra money? For like, sure. you know, we all are kind of just trying to scrape by. Like, there's almost nobody who's making, you know, no model who's making millions of yeah. fucking dollars. It's not all coming from doing scenes. Yes. Yeah. If if she is, it's it's because she's got a million other things going on. Right. You know who um, I just love? I think that she's amazing and she posts advice all the time is Lena Paul mm-hmm. on her yeah, Twitter. She's I just super smart. And I just I I think that's awesome. I think she's really providing a great resource to to the girls and, and the guys too in the business. Just saying, go out. This is this is what you need to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, take care of yourself, your physical health, your mental health. You know, the, here are these apps for managing your money, all this kind of stuff, like invest investing advice and all that. Um, <clears throat> I think it's very important. Um, you can't survive in this business yeah. unless you have. Um, you know, um, ten other things. Ten going. other things going on. Yeah, yeah. I counted. Um, it's funny because every time I feel like I've mentioned this on this podcast, it's it, the number goes up. But I have like eighteen different streams of revenue. That's amazing. <laughs> and I need all of it. Yeah, you know, because like I'm not really getting any one big chunk from one one thing anymore. Yeah, it's all like little bits coming from here and there and that, and it's just like a constant. It's exhausting. Yeah, it is. Like I just feel like I never stop working. It's crazy. Yeah. And, but I don't know. That's the price you pay for being independent, and there's something really wonderful about that. Yeah. No, I, it's funny because I'm coming – I was like coming up here, and I just see people, and they're kind of like trudging to their office, mm-hmm. and they're going to be sitting yeah. in an office. Yeah. And I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. It's – uh you know, I mean, bless the people that that can do it, I mean, mm-hmm. and, and are fine with it. I just – I was never a person that could – sit still and and do a task, you mm-hmm. know, like file these papers and input this data and mm-hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah I'll I'll take this. I'll take the stress and the uh-huh. you know, the weird existential crises that I I'm struck with at like two o'clock in the morning. Like, What's been, <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> There's something to be said about um and I think maybe it takes a certain kind of personality. Like I don't think that I could ever have a job where I knew that I was gonna get the same amount of money every month. Yes. Like, no matter what I did. Like that would just I don't know that that doesn't do it for me. I like the fact that like I could have a big windfall and make a bunch of money this month, and um, maybe really struggle the next month. I mean, I don't love the struggle months, but I love like the opportunity and the possibility that I could do this, and suddenly like I could make all this money or I could do this. Like I I just love that. There's something about that that rush, you know. Yeah. And I don't know. It's it's almost like a like a drug kind of, you know, just chasing that, chasing that opportunity. It, it, it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 it's never a dull moment. Yes. And, and that's the thing that I, I think that, that we get, um, cause there's a million different things you can do mm-hmm. and the options out there. And then you're meeting new people and you're having new experiences. It's not, I mean, yes, I, I get the comfort of like, I make this amount of money per year. Mm-hmm. It's never going to change, but I know that all my things are handled. Yeah. It's, uh, 
you're just doing that same thing over yeah. and over again. So, but I think some people, you know, that's good for them, and and they like knowing that they're making the same amount of money and they can pay these bills, and you know what they look forward to is going out with their friends on the weekends yeah. or coming home and watching American Idol on TV at night or whatever that may be. But like I think for people like you and me, what yeah. we look forward to is like that new business opportunity, that new possibility, that new art project that we want to do. Yeah. It's not really about like the weekend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially since weekends don't really exist. Yeah, I know. You're an independent <laughs> yeah. I know. I know exactly. Oh, good. It's a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything happening today. Thank God. It's Monday. I know, yeah. right? Well, thank you so much for coming in, Dana. It was really, really great to have you. Thank you. Um, can you – what is the – so the name of your new – just to recap, the name of your new site that's going to be launching – Sometime before the new year. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Um, is horrorxxx.com. Terror. Terrorxxx.com. Yeah, terrorxxx.com. Okay. And then where can people find you on social media? Um, at Dana Vespoli on Twitter, Real Dana Vespoli on Instagram. Fantastic. And you were also featured in Angela White's new movie, I Am Angela. Yes. Yes, I That's saw right. that. I saw that. I thought that was really cool. So you guys should definitely check her out in that. Um, and you can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next week.